Hi, welcome to What's the Tea. I'm Art to the Edgy. I'm Nick Ju. I'm gonna try to make it through this whole fucking episode without yelling at anybody or cussing anybody out. Oh, that's not. I will say it's gonna take some work, <laughs> but I'm ready to do that work. I'm it's, trying to better myself. It's gonna take a miracle. Okay, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Denise. To make me love someone. Since we're here. Come on. Auntie Chella, Uncle Chella. Homage. Like, so I hope somebody uh, helped Uncle Ron figure out how to open his DMs. Because it was so many pussies and booty holes in there. Well, he's married and his wife is fine as fuck. Like I said, it was so many pussies and booty holes in there. <laughs> So we are talking about the Easter extravaganza, Essence Festival, cookout, fucking baby shower, graduation party, Earth, Wind & Fire, as the Brothers versus. He has rose, rose, rose. Including me, bitch. Child. When I tell you, the first time I was like, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna tweet thirst about Ronald Isley. Like, that's just not a thing I'm going to do. Why not? Because he's 80. Nicka. 79. My God. But I did. <laughs> I mean, of course. Of course. <sighs> I fucking of did eventually. I held out for a good little piece of time, though. I mean, like, his hips don't work, but that doesn't matter. I could do all the work for you. I mean... Ooh. I've done more with a lot less. Ooh, I'm not even gonna say what I was gonna say. Child, what were you gonna say with the nasty ass? I tweeted that he would have to take that Niagara um, on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And people were like, ew, gross, ew. And I get it because the mental image that I have of Ronald Isley was not a very attractive man in various stages of his life. But the man that was on my television last night, like, that was a cat daddy. Listen, swag is sexy. That's fuck. Also, like... I know that I'm a woman of a certain age because when the beard has more salt than pepper in it against dark skin, like, honey. Baby, baby. Honey. And he can still sing. <laughs> Jesus. And he got a little swagger. Okay. That's partially his arthritis. He has a 14-year-old son and, like, a, a daughter that was born in like 1969 or something like Yeah, that. I was like, Larry King, <laughs> God rest his soul, had kids born in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, <laughs> the hits of the 80s to today. Well, it's one of the many, many unfair things of life is that men produce viable sperm well into their like 80s. Right. Um, I wish Which I is also like, it's while we're, we're getting to Easter, but like, it is a miracle that Abraham and Sarah conceived that child. Baby. Um, I wish I had the presence of mind to date. She had powdered eggs. <laughs> Them shits were dust. Scrambled. <laughs> over. Look, the Bible said dust to dust. That's what the fuck he meant. Over medium well. <laughs> um, over 40 years ago <laughs> I wish I had the presence of mind to date older men like 10 years ago when I was still like a viable childbearing age <laughs> like I can't I, I'm sure I could probably have one 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 mo right now but like 75 year old sperm and a 42 year old egg would make a baby that I don't know <laughs> if we want to make that somebody else is raising. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With my high risk ass pregnancy. Um, uh, but 10 years ago, I definitely would have somebody pop up with a middle schooler right now, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's quite as it's kept. Uh, Richard Williams' youngest kid, Dylan, is like 12 years old. No, totally. Like, I have older men have been attracted to me since I was in my early 20s, and my father's friends always were ready, like, ready <laughs> if i if i just had a different state of mind back then i would be in a totally different situation right now i mean baby listen 
<laughs> if I made different, just, yeah. Look, if if was a spliff, nigga. Look, <laughs> we would all be high. <laughs> okay, uh, high with raising somebody else's badass kids. But I, I really um, was going into this heavily favoring Earth, Wind, and Fire. And after having like several discussions on Twitter, I think that's a regional thing because I think just out west. There's something about the elements that we just go up for. Yes. Not that I didn't love respect. No, Earth, Wind, and Fire makes outside music. Exactly. And Ivy Brothers make inside music. Exactly. And I and we spent a lot of time, like our family gatherings that were inside, there wasn't a lot of music being played. But we didn't have a lot of family gatherings inside because we have such a fucking ginormous family on both sides that like all of our gatherings would be outside somewhere. So it would be... Earth, Wind, Fire, Tower, Power, right. Confunction, like stuff like that. Um, but not that I didn't love the Isley Brothers and respect them. And like, I just came to appreciate and know more of their music later in life. And it was like the backwards thing for me. Like I would hear a song and then hear the Isley song and go, oh, this is today was a good day. Uh-huh. Versus with Earth, Wind, and Fire, when I first heard that E40 song, I was like, oh, this is the... Yeah, so... I also, like, what was nice about growing up with the Christian side and the unchristian side Come is, on. like, my, <laughs> my Christian side was definitely Earth, Wind, and Fire. Because, you know, every holy, holy, holy be like... And also Take Six did a remake of that on one of... Or they, like... Uh, sample that on one of their tracks as an oh, interlude. Oh, yeah. But my my father's side of the family, no surprise, shut your mouth, was the <laughs> was the Isley Brothers side. Yes. Like definitely Irk and Jerk flowing. Come on, Irk and Jerk. <laughs> Irk and Jerk flowing freely at every family function where the Isley Brothers are playing. Yeah, totally. Um, but I knew going in that it was going to be a uh, many more earth wind and fire quote unquote wins for me i didn't even bother to take score theoretically off the no top. we've yeah. won the last five of these exactly the culture of win. um off the top of my head I, I would say that it was mostly ewf for me however um i did like re-fall in love with some isley brother songs and also um discover some isley songs so i've been listening to the Isleys most of the day today. And like, I knew that Hello song with Erica Badu and Andre 3000 was a cover, but I never really paid attention to the original version. I've been listening to that. Yeah, on, on the repeat. original is beautiful. Beautiful. I've been listening to that on repeat. I've been listening to um, Voyage to Atlantis on repeat today. And also, um, obviously, uh, At Your Best. What is it called? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was another one I, in reverse heard Aaliyah and then was like, oh, this is the song. And I think it's like, they're both really good. <laughs> they're both so good. It's just rather, do you want like an angel, a beautiful angel sitting on a cloud, whispering lovely tune in your ear? Or do you want a soulful fucking like, guardian of love guiding you into eternity with your deepest lover you know which one uh, <laughs> both right exactly <laughs> um Aaliyah, like Aaliyah round floated. one and round three yeah Aaliyah floated but Ron's falsetto is just it is just yeah and I mean it's also partially like my whole total utter molecular standship of ernie's daughter over the last 18 months my twin has like <laughs> huh my twin your fucking twin <laughs> um has really like uh imp like increased my awareness of the isley brothers so that i came in with a much more 50 50 split for me like especially hearing her cover some of like her family's like old songs Most definitely. like my God. There was an intermission, honey, um, an outfit change. <laughs> you mean a fucking dinner break? <laughs> we have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> no, there's a picture here of Ron Isley back in the day, and he was 
I mean, he wasn't ugly. I think the eyebrows were a little severe. This is not I mean, an ugly man. No, he's never been ugly. Um, he he kept taking his hat off, but I was like. I don't have a problem with him, the way he looks with the hat off. It's just that his hair kind of fine. And so it was messed up. He had hat hair. Like if he would have just kept it on or left it off, it would have been fine. But like off But he on, wanted to let y'all niggas know he still had all the follicles on top of that motherfucker. And when he took his glasses off, my panty drawers evaporated. Like, Listen. Like you can't look into the camera and be like, are we really sure? Something happened Listen. to me. Why keep hearing footsteps, babe? That's the, I'm definitely cheating, so I'm projecting onto you because I think you're also cheating, Anthem. Love babe, it. again, why Why those songs are more popular on my father's side of the family. <laughs> touche, touche. Um, Every versus the timeline finds something to complain about. This time it was Steve Harvey. And in my opinion, the complaints about him were more annoying than he was. Like, we knew what the fuck he was going to do. We knew he was going to hook, hook, hook the entire night. We knew. We knew. I will say I did. I had a conversation with a black gay friend of mine. Um, and he was just like, I would love... I'm so looking forward to having a space where we don't have to, like, tuck part of ourselves in. Because, yes. like... And and again, like, I think it's very different not being in person, but like, it is, it is obvious that like, that was not a, that was not a space where that was like, invited or, or welcomed. Like, even as, like, even Auntie Patty and Gladys was like, come on, Queens. Right. Um, I missed but, what he said. I like blinked and missed what he said, but I saw the whole time eating him up. Um Yeah. But, you know, like, I think that we are, we are actively working on our, I hope we are working on ourselves. And, and I feel like that was not shocking or surprising to At me. All. Um, and not I, was okay. for, I was here for the music and I came for the music. I stayed for the music. I was edified by the music right. and I was irritated by fucking bullshit. But people were irritated to the point where they let it ruin the experience for them and therefore they were trying to ruin the experience for other people. And I think what people fail to realize this is always my biggest complaint about Twitter. Your timeline is you're you're putting that out into the world. It's not something that you absorb. So if you're just shit posting for four hours about how much you hate Steve Harvey, then that is the experience that you're putting out for other people. Like I get it, let's commiserate, let's drag him a little bit. But if now he becomes the whole topic, then we're this is the party. You know, that's why I wish sometimes yeah. Twitter had like sections like I don't want to be in the let's just talk shit about Steve Harvey for four hour room. Like I'm happy to drag him and make jokes on him and he'll kill cook and post the Godfrey tweet and like Godfrey tweet and just keep it pushing. But like yeah. every other, t it was like, okay, now you're just as annoying as he fucking is. Yeah. Like, can we, I'd actually love to just ignore him. Right. And people were like, and like, I get it. All of the complaints were valid. Yes, Donnie Simpson would have been a better host. Yes, we wanted somebody. Oh my to God. Where was Donnie Simpson? Child sleep in a bit. They were in <laughs> LA. I think Donnie's still in DC. Um, actually, you know who would have been a better host? Anybody. Literally. Wait, are you ready for this though? Yes. Mainly because I would have wanted him to like sing along. Who? Billy Porter. Um, he does. <laughs> he, he also does much. He does very many much. And he's. I'll talk about it when we <laughs> read the email later. Um, very, he's very many much. He's very many much. I, yes. I and I do. But they, I think they did get their teeth at the same store. <laughs> I just, I get it. People wanted him to like interview them and get their stories and talk about historical things or whatever, but they all had microphones in their hands. And to me, they weren't giving vibes of like, I hella want to talk. Wait, but were there hosts for other ones? 
No, no. And obviously we know why they let him host because he was going to stand and be a fangirl. And everybody was like, I learned more about Steve Harvey than I learned about these artists. I get it. I truly get it. But like they all had microphones and he could have facilitated a conversation better between everyone. But like the only person who really felt like they wanted to say something was Ron Isley. And he said a few things here and there. They were right. more, it, to me, they were more comfortable talking to each other while the music was playing. Yeah. And maybe that's the fault of the producers. Like, they probably didn't sell it to them as like, we want to have some conversations about, um, you know, the backstories of how these songs are written or maybe some fun, you know, behind the scenes stuff about what it, the experience was recording or some fun touring stories. Like, I don't think that anybody prepped them they were just like hey you want to do this thing where we play some of your records with your friends and the other band and yay yeah um so and then like swizz i guess talked to him during the break or whatever but he overcorrected and just told him not to talk at all and i think the correction should have been ask them questions uh try to to get them to to talk to share yeah, yeah. like one of the best things about patty and auntie patty and auntie gladys was them like sharing stories with each other. And right. I know that those men have seen and shared things together. Right, it just, to me, just, and this is just my reading of body language and whatever, I don't know that they wanted to do that. Sure. Yeah, and sure. there could be a lot of trauma associated, especially like Maurice hasn't been dead very long. I know, I know. And just like missing his voice. Yeah, yeah, you know? So um, what was the highlight for you? Oh, my God. I mean, the end. Yes, that was special. Very special. I just, like, I just, like, I feel like the last 409 years in this country have just been so fucking shitty for Black people, minus January 20th, 2009. Yes. Um, and, and so to be able to, like, see a bunch of our, our el like, our Black elders who, you know, are not perfect, are not heroes, are not, you know, also like fantastic. I'm so happy that Robert was not invited. Yes. Um, well, he in jail. Favorite. What was he going to huh? do? He in jail. He couldn't come. I know. So I was like, the only person I want to see is Robert versus the state of Illinois. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> um, uh, we know who's winning that battle. Uh, <laughs> but like to just see like our to see our our elders and ants like our elders before they transition into becoming our ancestors sharing space together yes like in a space that was curated and cultivated by young people who are their legacy like mm -hmm. it just like brought literal tears to my eyes I loved so many of the songs it was such a vibe like I was just so happy like sitting in my apartment like drinking wine by my black ass self mm -hmm. like it was just like fantastic same for me and like at, at a certain point in all of the verses that i have heavily favored i got up out of my seat doing a little dance it was a devotion for me i'm like oh devotion um but yes. my absolute favorite moment was when ron like shimmied up to the mic and was like i like it when you call me big pop but before they did between the sheets like uh they just like just to see them have fun yeah yes you know like after all we've survived, like particularly in the black community with COVID and like vaccine misinformation and well-earned suspicion, like I hope, I'm sure all those men were safe and like to be able to like be around each other and not to be masked. Mm -hmm. I hope they're all vaccinated, Jesus Christ, Baby. Lord, please, Jesus, my God, Lord, please. Um, but like, it just, it looked so fucking fun. Yeah. And, and there was, you know, just some great comments on Twitter once you filtered through the Steve Harvey complaints. It just was like, you know, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire is for the meats and the Isley Brothers is for the sheets. But but the elements Baby. ain't no punk. The elements ain't no punk when it comes to a motherfucking love song. Okay. Nah. Craving about day is this real. The motherfucker reasons. I don't want to sing. Like. Uh, oh, come on. Woo, woo. No need to start. <laughs> I'm not even drunk. <laughs> After the love is gone. Like, Look, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> How could you leave me? What? 
Now let me stay around. Oh, 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 oh. See, like, after the stop. love is gone, <laughs> I done ripped out my microphone, my earphone cord. Jesus, <laughs> uh, what you what you know about that? What you know about? Yeah, I'm just rocking back and forth like a fucking eighty year old. What you know about some King High love? Okay. You want my love? <laughs> ah. I. Mm. I bet you. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hey. Oh. 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 And they break into motherfucking harmony. Oh. You know what that harmony is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Yes. Also, um, thankfully, I uh was not introduced to this artist last night but there was a phil collins appreciation baby because i don't remember take me home huh huh come on come on i could feel it coming in the air tonight oh lord um yeah so it was just really lovely really lovely i i had such a great time and there was a a hot moment where Aura voice came on, but it was no way they was going to do that without uh, playing Contagious. I mean, come on. Come on. Come on. Right. It was, it was, you know, the song was a fucking moment. Right. And, and again, like, let's not, let's not erase the labor that Ron and Ernie and the rest of them put on that motherfucking cut. Also, not to go unnoticed, but the Isleys have a hit in every decade from the 50s to the 2000s. I mean, when so, will your face? So we could not include the song from the 2000s. When will your fave? <sighs> hello, hello. Oof. Like, there's also, I don't know, I don't know about you, like, but I think, that, like, obviously Ernie is like a, a guitar virtuoso. Yes. And I'm happy the timeline was like, can we stop the bullshit? He did not teach Jimi Hendrix how to play the fucking guitar. If anything, it was like... The other way around. <laughs> or what did Megan say? No. The opposite, the opposite happened. Well, the no, the thing is that Jimmy taught him. If anything, it's the other way around because Ernie's older and was already yeah. playing. Um, But like, there's something beautifully humble about Ron's voice. Like he's not Ooh. doing, like Ooh, he's not, blo he's, you, but you know, but you know, but but you had that reaction cause you know what the fuck I'm talking Ooh. about. That, the, that opening line in Voyage to Atlantis. Oh God. <sighs> it's like the, the tone, like his tone is just. It's really great. It's really great. And I love me a nice open falsetto. Baby. Like. Baby. Yeah. Like, it's it's so, like, it, it pierces like a fucking pin. Can I go on my way without you? Don't. Stop. <laughs> okay. Yes. So definitely a time was had. I'm I'm learning and revisiting some music from the Isleys that I haven't been that familiar with. Revisiting some faves from Earth, Wind, and Fire that I've loved for a long time. It was just a great night. A great, 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 great night. The next one I will probably skip. No shade. It's Method Man versus Red Man. And I probably won't know very many songs from either of them. But I will enjoy watching the timeline go up. Because those dudes are funny. Um, and they're friends. And I'm sure it'll be a good time. Yes, I just want both of them to be shirtless is my only request. At one point, yes. <laughs> uh, because Eiffel Tower emoji. Baby, baby. Ooh. <laughs> uh, what's the T? Child. Child. Okay, I'm not going to start talking about shit that I am going to start yelling about. So I'm not going to talk about the news. Um, you watched the movie. Which? Oh, Bad, Bad Trip? Trip? Bruh, yes. that 
That shit was so fucking funny. <laughs> like, I I started it, like, kind of late that Monday night. So, it was, like, after 10 o'clock when I started it. I was laughing so hard and loud. I had to, like, cut it off because I'm, like, I'm going to get in fucking trouble. <laughs> like, somebody's going to call I'm, I'm really happy people. that the scene in the bar wasn't too triggering. It was me. because it was fake looking. So, I was, like, oh, it's obviously not real throw up. So, I was fine. Like it just, I knew, I knew as soon as the scene came on, I was like, "Oh, this is the throw up part." Yeah. So I was prepared to look away, but then when it actually happened, I was like, "Oh, the the setup is so obvious." Like I, I still like looked away from the screen, but I didn't have to like think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It was so motherfucking funny, and also like, what a wonderful like concept because usually the jackass movie it doesn't the jackass movie it's like borat those borat movies there's a plot but it's also contrived and like fake and whatever um yeah the only borat movie i've seen is this newer one which i thought was weird as fuck but i did think it was funny but this black people are so amazing we can do fucking everything and the fact that it, like neither Eric Andre or Lil Rel lost their life playing in black people's face like that. They <laughs> a feat. Well, part of me is like, did they recognize Lil Rel or Tiffany Haddish? Because like TSA was a whole fucking meme for for most for like the better part of the year. Yes, but and... I don't know how well um Get Out went into like the community at large. Black Twitter. Absolutely. But was it hitting the Medea audience? Sure, 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 sure. That's a great, yeah, that's great. That's, yeah, sure. But he did have like a whole TV show. Right. Which not very many people watched, but I did. And I thought it was funny. <laughs> right, exactly. So You're like, some, did everybody watch that? Some... <laughs> When we know wrote on the show, I thought it was funny. I just, I, I think it didn't work because he wasn't like a big enough star to have his own show yet. And also just not hilarious is a terrible actress. Like, where's my TV show? Yes, girl. Like, who do I have to fellatiate? <laughs> Who's in get? charge of the girls? Okay, because like I've been working on some skills over quarantine and I cannot make banana bread, but I can do other things. Who's in charge of the girls? Okay, I've been in the gym. I was like doing jumping jacks. I now have pet titties. Um, <laughs> so like somebody bend me over and put me on television. Right. Not in that order, right? but like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Hold can... me out, damn it. We just gotta get famous on TikTok. I'm okay. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna do something and just send it to you so you could do it. We're gonna do the scene from um, Obsessed. <gasps> <laughs> you do you do it with me, and it's gonna go viral. Ciao. Yes. Okay. Done. Done. Because you book, know, book it. Because you know what part is gonna make it go viral. When I raised my hand up and shrug, she was just like, <laughs> "Oh, that scene." Yes. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the fight. No, child, the the the. <laughs> oh yes, yes, the the scene of the movie. <laughs> Should we practice? <laughs> what do you want me to do, Sharon? What do you want me to do? I don't know. Or whatever the fuck you said. <laughs> to hell. <laughs> but I'll do anything you want. I don't you think I touch this woman, Sharon? Sharon? <laughs> Sharon! <laughs> Sharon, they won't let me have my real accent. So I'm oh, struggling. My God. my God. When she threw that fucking plate. Uh. Baby... No, literally, when she threw her hand up, like, so? I cry every time. 
it's just such a good movie. But like, I feel like every time I watch that movie, I have to be eating sushi. Because <laughs> your last brought a whole <laughs> sushi dinner in a damn movie theater. <laughs> yeah, I was a pioneer. And like, a whole before, and before these movie theaters were selling <laughs> meals, I was like, I'm gonna bring my own food. And and to me, this was the most impressive part. A one liter bottle of soda. From the 99 cent store that was down the street. <laughs> I feel like we talk about Obsessed like quarterly on this show. And I feel like if you call yourself a member of T-Town, cousin, and you haven't seen Obsessed in the last six months, watch it. What are you, like, yeah. What like, are you even I just, doing? I, yeah. I, I encourage you, I encourage you to just do it. Just do it. First watch Bad Trip. Please do. You know what part had me fucking creased? <laughs> the the gorilla. <laughs> the gorilla, yes. But the bus when she got off the bus. Wait, when did she get off? Oh my god! In the very oh beginning. My god. <laughs> the very beginning. <laughs> that nigga was like, "You better go." I won't, I won't he was say like, anything you else. Better go. And she kept running around trying to kiss him. He was like, I'm going to get in trouble. Get, get out of here. Good. Black oh, people are he was amazing. Like, he was like, look that way. Go, go that way. Go that way. Black people are amazing. That's all I'm going to say. Go that way. I thought it was really good. It was really good. Um... <laughs> when when he came back to her gallery, she was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> And then in the um, the end credits where they like tell people that they're filming a movie, <laughs> and the black people were like, "I was about to say," <laughs> <laughs> she was about because the the black lady who was an ex ex cop or ex security, she was like, "Listen, she gonna beat his motherfucking ass. <laughs> she gonna kill that nigga, and I'm okay with it." Like, how many n words did they have that one man saying in the outtake? Fifty million eleven. <laughs> They were like in North Carolina somewhere. When the, and when the with the scene with the gorillas, they told those black people that they were filming. Yes. that was fucking hilarious. It's really good, y'all. Really, really good. Um, um, speaking of T Town cousins, we got like a beautiful uh piece of feedback. Yes, let's read it from our website. We got a website, y'all. What's the teapod dot com? Uh. This is from Jazz. An overdue review. Sorry for the length. You don't have to worry about that, baby. Okay, you don't never have to apologize to me about something being long. Especially when it's about us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick and Ridge. Wanted to write as it's been over a year since finding your podcast and it's seen me through so much. I'm a 20-something tri-state gal who moved from the U.S. to the U.K. almost two years ago for a job. And baby, I've been so homesick. One day in the before times, I was at work and put What's the Tea in Spotify, hoping to find a black podcast in some of some sort, and boom, there y'all were. I listen every week and sincerely enjoy the dose of home y'all deliver, keeping me up to date with politics, pop culture, reality TV, and more. You guys do more than make me laugh. You make me think, <clears throat> especially about dating interracially. As a black woman who's seriously dating a white British man and was raised in predominantly white suburban areas, I took a step back to reflect on the whys and the hows of attraction after hearing Nick's views on fetishization, self-hatred, etc. <clears throat> Massage noir is something I've often encountered from black men, but did work to rebuild trust in them as romantic partners right around the time I met a man approximately a year ago. For a while, I struggled with the thought of a non-black life partner as my serious exes are black. Your discussions led me to do some soul searching and helped me <clears throat> conclude that while I neither see my white partner as a trophy or rule out slash bash black men, it's vital to advocate for more representation of healthy black love in media. In the end, I accept that I fell for who I fell for and couldn't ask for a more lovely human, but wanted to say thank you for the work you do, the thoughts you provoke, and the laughs you bring. Keep it up. Much love, Jazz. <clears throat> First of all, thank you so much, so, so, so much for your review. Whenever you write, it's on time. So don't worry about the overdue. Um, and secondly, a, a little bit why I sort of wanted to back off on this topic is because I do realize that we have a lot of listeners who are in interracial relationships. And like, because of my own hangups, my 
internalized anti-blackness and my thing that I went through, I never want to alienate people who listen to and love our show because I don't want to paint all interracial relationships with the same broad brush. And quiet as it's kept and y'all can be mad at me for this, I don't really care. I feel like as black women, you go where you're loved. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different about that. Yeah, what? Yeah, ain't nobody really mad about that. And I have a different view about black men who choose non-black partners because I'm a black woman and I grew up in the 90s and I watched our men choose non-black women or exotic looking black women or whatever. And now it's happening all over again. And like, you know, there's jokes on TikTok and Twitter. It's like, you're, I feel sorry for you because your grandkids gonna be posting pictures of you on social media to prove they're black. And it's like, the, the, the Wait, fuck? what the fuck? <laughs> like, uh, uh, Donna Summer's granddaughter is white looking. And there's this thing on TikTok with her and like some other girl that I saw who looks like a white person. And they both have like one black grandparent. So it's just like as a response to that, somebody was like, one day your, your grandkids gonna be posting pictures of you on social media to prove they, they're black. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that there's this thing that because of the ills of white supremacy, we want our children to go to better schools. And I'm seeing it with like my cousin's children where you're you're trying to put your child in the best position to succeed. And especially where we're from, that is moving them away from blackness. So now there's yeah. this generation behind us of young black men who won't even look at a black woman because they don't go to school with us. They don't know us. The media doesn't represent us like that. And, and it's getting better. It's not like there is, there's no, it's like there's Ryan Destiny. There's, you know, a bunch of beautiful black women of all shades. Um, yeah. And everybody, I mean, even, go ahead. Even as it relates to like school, like I feel like our, and you know, like we didn't, we weren't at college at the same time, but I would consider us, I mean, obviously because we were like soulmates, but like, I would consider us the same generation, but like I feel like the generation before us and the generation after us are like super turned up about HBCUs, but I feel like our like people who went to college from the like 90s to the early 2000s like it just like wasn't it wasn't a thing because we were trying to like we were taught that we needed to go to white institutions to succeed. Well, I think we were trying to assimilate Honestly. Yeah, of course, because we thought that that was the key. that was the key. Because my dad was like, "You should go to an HBCU." I'm like, "Everyone I'm related to is black. Our entire family, with hundreds of people, only people I see on the weekends are black. Like right. when I go to school, it's the only time I see people who are not black, and I'm interested in those people." Right. Um, but I think I wish I would have listened to him. Quite honestly, I mean, honestly, me too. I mean, it, it means that we wouldn't have ever met. True. And you know, honestly, I wish you would have listened to him too. You know what? Uh. I wish you did. I wish you would eat a dick. <laughs> Um, but I also think that like a lot of that is still a personal choice because there are plenty of black people who grew up in the suburbs and they were like the only black person and they didn't end up choosing a white partner. So I, I want to say, um, I do apologize if anything I said made you feel like I was attacking you or your blackness or your owning of your blackness. It's never that for me. All it is for me in my personal experience is I, as a black woman, did not feel like black men were choosing us by and large. Was it true? Absolutely not. I had my own hangups and thank God, thank God, I got through most of that stuff in my late teens. <clears throat> and, I, and I feel for every black person who May of 2020 was a watershed moment for them. We make fun, I had shit to say about Tasia, but truly in my heart of hearts, Whenever y'all come home, I'm ready to welcome you home because thank God people welcomed me home when I came. And, and I couldn't imagine doing that at 30 or 40 for that yeah. matter. Um, but my thing has always been the fetishization, like you said, the self-hatred. And yes, I too have encountered some massage noir from black men. But I really have encountered it from white people and they repackaged it and resold it as like special snowflake shit and gave and and, and differing you as better 
by accepting you, but the price of admission was you were not like those other black people in a good way. And I'm not saying that this is your experience. I'm not saying that this is everybody's experience. But what got me to where I was, was me. It was me. 12, 15, 19, 22, it was still me and my decisions. So for me, like getting on the internet over a decade ago, the biggest the biggest life lesson that I've taken away from that is by learning that people who grew up around other black people and liked weird shit or red or whatever the fuck thing that, that the bitter black people say against other black people. Cause the thing is kids are cruel. Kids are fucked yeah. up. Kids make fun of each other, black, white, whatever it, it's going to happen. But I'll tell you what doesn't happen you don't get to turn away from your entire community because some kids were mean to you and then turn around and look down on them because the white people accept you. But what, at what cost? Right. And I'm not talking yeah. to you, Jazz, specifically on any of this. I'm not coming for you. But at what cost did, did you... Did you did that acceptance cost? You have to twist yourself into a pretzel. Did you have to become a black spokesperson? Are you now in the middle of a pandemic and a racial uprising having to manage white feelings every day? Is that what you paid for it? Or is it in the case of jazz and millions of other people, you just fell in love with who you fell in love with, period. Right. I mean, that's what John Mayer said. You love who you love who you love. If right. it's who you love, then it's who you love. It's who you love. Him and <laughs> Kitty Purry. Um, but what I did know is it's like, and we're going to come to this topic next. I realize religion is horrible on a global scale, on a personal scale. People have been abused and damaged in the name of God. And they walk away from the church. Literally murdered. Literally yeah. murdered. And people have walked away from the church for, for one experience, for a lifetime of experience, for some harmful shit. They sever that relationship and they never look back. But some people, we figure out that it's not every church. It's not the whole religion. And you eventually find your way. Um, and I think it's the same thing for black love for me. I had a horrible experience with a black man. Um, and I was talking to this today, um, about this day with a friend, but that experience, even though he was terrible, it really opened my eyes to the fact that like relationship going to be terrible. It's going to be bad luck. It's going to be incompatibility. It's going to be lying and cheating. You looking stupid, but I would rather do that. And the finish line or whatever is the, the experience of black love where it's not about excellence. It's not about hotepery it's not about being better than anybody it's just being your whole entire self and you don't have to tuck anything in or you don't have to overly explain anything and obviously like men and women are different or men and men are different women and women are different. non-binary people are different everybody's coming to the table with their collection of experiences so there's going to be some learning that you have to do in every situation but there's just some shorthand that I personally find when I connect with other black people in a romantic setting. And that's my preference. And yeah. I'm not saying that there isn't a white man or a non-black man who couldn't um, ex to, it, you know, encounter me the way that I have encountered black men, but I've done that and I'm, I just don't feel like I need to do that any longer. I feel like- I mean, everything... you might meet a, a non-black man who's 21 feet tall, but yes, right. like- that wall is is important and and not not just to keep people out but to keep you in. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm 100%. 100%. And, and I, that's what August said. And I think no no matter what race your partner is, this time together if you've been living together has made everybody reevaluate the person that they have to look at all day every day. And I hope that in that evaluation you come out on the other side knowing that you chose well not only your partner but yourself always you what is what is the line set the you your own best thing okay and so whoever is lying in your bed at night if they recognize you as your own best thing and they're their own best thing and y'all are coming together to make something dope i don't have shit to say i really don't ever amen all right well Come on, Pastor. Let's talk about Jesus. Boom, boom, boom.
Um, so he coming in a Honda, so not top. <laughs> Yesterday was Christian Super Bowl. Um, and this Lenten season, like even more than Christmas too. Yes. Oh, please, Christmas is like, like Jesus showed the fuck out last week. Yeah, no, Christmas is lightweight compared to Libra. Like, and this year it was like I and forgive me for this mispronunciation, but Holly or Holy, however it's pronounced, um, Easter and um Passover were well not. Easter, but Holy Week were all kind of at the same time. So it was like all the really lovely religious celebration, Ramadan right around the corner. Like, I love it when they all collide like that because it just means that Jupiter all the- had aligned its up with Mars. Baby sure. spring was starting. Like, it was a full moon. I just love when all of the spiritual people are doing their celebrations at the same time. I feel like the energy in the world is just so wonderful and magical. Um, the full moon drug me like I have fucking stole something and I don't know if I enjoyed that experience very much, but, um, I definitely fasted. I did the Sunday exception this year. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm on the fence about it every year. I reevaluate like, uh, because some holy scholars will tell you that you should break from your fast every Sunday because Sunday is a day of celebration and worship unto the Lord. And you should not spend any moment of that day like denying yourself of anything. Also, if you want to quit a habit, do it for your New Year's resolution. Don't choose this particular time of Jesus suffering to to lose weight or quit sugar, but like, again. (laughs) Or go back to the gym. To each each their own. I don't have nothing to say about that. There's a, there is something to be said for a full 46 days of, of denial of something, right? So I gave up something, but I also added something. And that, my friends, was what worked. That focused devotional time. Because every morning I read a scripture in my bed, I pray. And then I go on to social media. Then I go on about my day. But I added a few mo, a few minutes mo, every morning of a focused time of devotion. And I have to say, it was such an amazing experience. I've not, like... I'm not fully out of the woods as far as my health is concerned, but you can't tell me I'm not healed. Yeah, you can't tell me either. There was a literal miracle in my health. Like, my doctor is to this day, like, I can't believe this is the same body. Yeah. You can't tell me that wasn't supernatural. Look, don't don't get me to cutting on the India IRE. Look, look. All of this is not by chance. Listen, listen. Like, I am barely six months out from kissing death twice twice and i sit here today with a healthy heart and lungs full of air um so it was a very transformative period for me and i'm learning so much about myself like the way i present myself to the world has changed i'm like not fishing for compliments here, but it's very difficult for me to like post a picture of a video or a video on social media without makeup. And I'm I'm learning how to present myself to the world without makeup. Um, and that comes from not insecurity or uh, anything about how I look because I'm finally on team. Bitch, you are cute as fuck. Um, Lord <laughs> Jesus, I'm happy they <laughs> traded their fucking waivers in and traded you up. My God. <laughs> Ah. finally right um but it just comes from being a theater kid and feeling like i need to be camera ready at all time but the deliverance ha, is that i could be camera ready without makeup it's fine um but also that aside it is the staunch contrast of the jesus of the bible and this whatever creation that right-wing Americans have tried to pretend is Jesus. And the separation is so stark for me right now. And I don't and I'm not playing that game of like they're not real Christians. Oh yes, they are. I just don't know that they worship the God of the Bible any longer. I believe that they yeah. they're they're worshiping this white supremacist Jesus that they've created. 
I mean, like, if you like it, I love it. But, like, he sounds like a drag. <laughs> he sounds like a drag. Tell me less. Tell me less. Don't be a drag. Just be a queen. <laughs> okay. And I know that, that God is able. I know that God is love. I know that love is creation. And I feel like during this plague that has been cast upon or released unto or accidentally happened upon us right now, the worst of humanity is showing its colors and a lot of it is happening right here in the good old United States of America. What's good about these old 48 lower? Child, not much. <laughs> not much for a, a people living on stolen land built by stolen people. It's it's all feeling very chickens coming home to roosty. And I really hate that over a half a million people have suffered and died because of the greed of our so-called leaders and the negligence of the people who are supposed to be running this country. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how anybody who actually factually worships the King of King and Lord of Lords can believe the shit that these people are saying. Child, especially the ones that got their money scammed. You want to restrict people from having water, my nigga? Healthcare. Not even water when they're voting, but like healthcare. Like going back to Flint, though. Water? Bruh. Bruh. Like, you know what? Y'all love that motherfucking Second Amendment so much. You know what? Here's my solution free muskets for everybody. Baby. Because that's the shit that them niggas was talking about. If you want to be a motherfucking literalist with your dumb ass. Okay. Okay. With your, with, Lin, with loads, Lindsey Graham, bitch made ass oh, motherfucker. See, ugly look, ass. I'm not, I'm not yelling, so this does not count. <laughs> uh, with your AR 15, bitch, get the fuck out of here and go pick some ladybugs with your ugly ass. I think it is the fault of the religion that it can be misinterpreted so frequently that these people have existed and have become like what Westboro Baptist Church used to be, like these fringe lunatics are now the loudest, most prevalent voice of Christianity. And it's frankly embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And I can't and I can't play the they don't represent me game because if every person who claims to call themselves a Christian that you encounter is awful. A plus B equals Christians are awful. And there's nothing that I can say to change your mind. I'm just going to try my best to not be awful. But I'm, I'm looking like an outlier at this point. And also, like, you know, it's possible that when we, like, and, you've, and I've seen you do this in practice, like, when you're in the house of the Lord and you witness harm and you hear some bullshit that you say something right 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 or just be different and try to be as different as possible um like these people some of these people on tiktok are really speaking a word like this pastor who was just like y'all worried about this little nas x video but what about the children at our borders being mistreated why y'all don't care about that Baby. because if you don't have the internet you're not watching it right and, and people in the country don't have internet. So, like, what are, what are you worried about? And I understand, like, pastors trying to stay hip so they can speak to younger people or whatever. But, like, I need you to mind your pastor business. Why are you watching it? Why are you listening to that? First of all, why are you listening to Lil Nas X? Second of all, if you know what the video is about, why would you watch it? I feel the same way about, like, super woke people. You know everything is going to suck for you. It's like that South Park episode where they all had to be, like, in black turtlenecks doing the Philip Glass holiday production because everything was offensive to everybody. You know you too woke for this shit. Don't watch Saturday Night Live, nigga. Like, I did not see nine and a half weeks until I was, like, 26 years old. I still haven't. And, and... After waiting for so long to fucking watch the shit, I was like, this is whack. If you so sanctified, why you got the radio on? Why you okay. on YouTube? 
And okay. if you, as an adult, want to watch it just so you know what your kids are maybe consuming or you want to be able to address your con- congregation with, like, some knowledge, great. But if you spent any moment of your sermon in fucking Holy Week on either Palm Sunday or Easter Sunday talking about little, little Nas X. Montero got a word in your sermon these past two weeks. You are incompetent unless it was preaching about love and tolerance and minding because your business. If you Googling uh, Donnie McClurkin and Kirk Franklin and Marvin Sapp and Yolanda Adams, I don't know how your YouTube search result gets you to call me by your name. Baby. Also, uh, Donnie McClurkin talking about he going to be alone for the rest of his life because he just is choosing not to sin like nobody asked you for that where do we need a uh we need a, a cricket damn <laughs> anyway i'm here to tell you um trans visibility day passed but I'm still learning and I'm not the best and I still probably say stupid shit all the time. But if you're trans, non-binary, gay, lesbian, demisexual, curious, whatever, you have an internet auntie and me. I love you. I'm not one of them Christians who's praying for the sin to get out of you. Like, I just love you. And to me everybody sinning so if everybody ain't you know hate the sin love the sinner then it doesn't need to be specifically about gay people that shit that they translate to homosexual really means pedophile if we want to keep it a hundred um and like duran bernard said if jesus died for your sins and you're not sinning then he died for nothing did he die for nothing <laughs> Uh, um hey uh i'm not nobody auntie uh i'm gay i'll see y'all at the motherfucking parade ho just don't step on my shoes <laughs> right i'm not gonna take also it worth much. noting the first pride was a riot and it was not about gay marriage it was about it was about police brutality learn your facts know your history we're, we're still trying to sa- change the same shit because trans women of color have been out here on the front lines for us so let's be on the front lines for them if you see something say something don't let the bullshit pass. And that goes for every motherfucking body. You see somebody acting up, doing some fucking ignorant ass, violent ass, racist ass, xenophobic ass shit they're not supposed to be doing. Don't stand by like them officers when that man knelt on that man's neck for nine minutes. Baby. Tap him. Tap her. Say, uh-uh. Don't say that. Don't do that. Put yourself in harm. Put, if you can, put yourself in harm's way. And you say, well, it, it's dangerous. Well, what about them? Right. You gonna leave? You going to leave them alone because it's safer for you? That's not how we got here. Right. That's not how we got here. 100%. We need to we need to carry each other's burdens a little more bit. Thank you. Sports are dumb. Sports are dumb. Thomas got mad at me because I because uh, that woman um, posted a, a ad for that migraine medicine that she sponsored or maybe she helped to pay for. And I was like, can you take this if you're pregnant? I didn't like tweet it at her, but I was like, hashtag last retweet. Uh, and Thomas said, shut up. But I'm just like, if you're pregnant, girl, just let me know so I can stop getting my hopes up. Because every time you post an Instagram story, I'm like, is you going to be holding the baby bump? Are you going to be on a tennis court? What you going to do? You're fucking with my nerves. Uh, breaking news, bitch. What? Paul Pierce, oh, stupid ass, got fired. Oh, Lord, I thought you was going to say breaking news. She now she's pregnant. I was about to be. I was about to hang this motherfucking oh, phone no. up. <laughs> hey, Jigaboo. Good. Good. His old stupid ass. And like, here's the thing. I'm not puritanical. I don't have a problem with your married ass uh, doing whatever fuck you was doing with the women at the house. I'm not your wife. That's I didn't take no vows with you. I don't give a fuck about that. But I bet your employer has some shit to say about it on by <laughs> Disney, you dumb motherfucker. What were you thinking? What the fuck is you thinking, my nigga? Uh, breaking ESPN and NBA legend Paul Pierce. Legend. Ooh, legend. Legend. Not too much. Not too much. Paul Pierce have parted ways, according to sources. Pierce posted videos of himself with exotic dancers on Instagram. Exotic dancers? (laughs) That's what we call them. I feel like they was just girls at the gig. Um, exotic right. dancers on Instagram Live Friday night. Pierce has played a key role. A key role? 
Come on now. Um, on NBA we Countdown. We need some uh, journalistic integrity. <laughs> who, who edited this? Michael McCarthy, whoever he is. Uh, key role in NBA Countdown and other ESPN basketball programming. ESPN declined to comment. Here we go. Meanwhile on Twitter. How you get fired on your day off? <laughs> Legend in his own mind is sure. How you talking down? How you talk? How you down talking Pierce's career with a Ben Simmons profile pick? Baby, let's not forget the old days of ESPN where everyone was doing coke and smashing each other. Yes, <laughs> but no one was on IG Live when Chris Berman was smacking asses and saying, "You're with me, leather." <laughs> Uh -uh. Oh, ESPN soft, uh -uh. As, ESPN soft as fuck. Shaking my head. Somebody posted. They really some, are. Somebody posted some stats of Paul Pierce talking about. Yes, he is a legend. Child, dick riding should be recreational. Also, like, did he just get fired for hoeing? <laughs> Oh, NBA legend whose most legendary moment was pooping his pants during a game. Yeah, must be two legends. They were definitely just going to can him after his contract was up. And even before he did all that, there's no way he didn't see that coming. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't like he was a good analyst, LOL. <laughs> Oh, never thought I'd love to see career cut short by Instagram Live. See? Cancel culture. It's great. NBA legend and a gif of Michael Jordan looking at his laptop cracking the fuck up. <laughs> Ciao. Uh, I haven't seen the video. Was it that bad? Seems dirtbaggish at the most, but not a fireable offense. In the response, he's married. <laughs> I mean, the point stands. Uh, this is just sad. People can't live their T H E R E life. Listen, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be in public, you just gotta know. Uh, people gonna have some shit to say about your life. Especially if you have a public-facing job with an employer who's owned by Disney. No it one's on Instagram Live, nigga. No one said he couldn't live his life. They probably had a clause in his deal that said keep the adult-rated stuff to yourself. Social media is all but private. Right. Right. And the worst part, he lost his job for 350 IG viewers. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of fucking course, Paul Pierce, fucking old bitch. <laughs> oh, shit. For 350 Instagram viewers. <laughs> the gang. Baby. <laughs> Legend and key role are interesting words. Fascinating, aren't they? Right. Legends. Legend. We talking about Legend, you say. We talking about practice. <laughs> oh. Right. Um, I am excited about the new uh, Space Jam. I am too. I thought it, it looks cute. I'm excited about that, but. That's about it's the only sports things I have to say. Baby, the Warriors got beat by like 57 points. If them motherfuckers never play another minute of basketball, it would be too soon for me. I hope Steph, <laughs> I hope Steph go to the Lakers today, nigga. Like, bye. <laughs> I've never yelled at a girl like this in my life. Learn Ooh, from Lord, this. I Learn from this. We were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Yeah, that was. Whew. I did. I did watch that. Um, that highlight of that buzz that uh, buzzer beater, um, in the NCAA tournament. I was like, oh yay, sports. Yeah. I, I just did. like. I can't. I can't. I can't wrap my engine up. I'm just. 
to quote, I hope not a maggot now, King Curtis. I'm tired of making deals. I keep losing the deals. I keep um, losing. <laughs> I keep losing the deals. I refuse to get excited for another motherfucking event. Um, I'm not making any more deals. I quit. I will say, I wish I would have watched more of the NCAA, especially the women's tourney, but I just, I'm still... I can't watch college basketball like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have I have a problem with the institution, and I literally do mean institution. <laughs> that I, and I'm happy that there is progress being made about like these student athletes right. who are literally marketable entities, right? Um, who are not getting any any funding. Right. any money, any nothing. And I mean, all sports are corrupt and there could be a moral reason to quote unquote boycott any sport. It's just, I don't really enjoy college sports because I have, oh, Lord Jesus. Why I keep ripping my headset being out. Jesus, it's, Somebody it's everybody okay? Envy, are we live? Okay. Um, I just don't enjoy it. The, the Popeye's man trying to deliver another fish sandwich? <laughs> no. I just don't enjoy live sports. I mean, college sports. Sorry. I was like, girl, I know you lying. Because, uh, again, it's the same sort of thing with like HBCUs. In, in total, yes, there are many people from the Bay Area who went to HBCUs. It's just not a part of like the forefront of my family, at least college yeah. sports and i think it's because we're spoiled in the bay area we have so many professional teams in every sport that you don't have to necessarily root for college because there's no professional team in your market well yeah we that yeah we were not rooting for motherfucking cow no unless you <laughs> like unless you went there like there's no level of like georgetown or unc where where you wear fucking Stanford or Cal gear because it's fly. Like you, Ooh, you, you have to go there. Yeah. All right. Well, let's yeah. let's get out of here because I think I done knocked around the motherfucking levels. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Let's go. I want to say thank you for listening to our show. And thank you for subscribing to our Patreon. I think my laptop is on its last leg, so I'm probably going to have to do something about that very soon. And with the support of all of you, we'll be able to make that happen. Um, when Drag Race is over, which should be very shortly, because LA can probably film indoors in the next two weeks, because California opened up indoor venues for the 15th, I think, of April. So we're probably going to get a Drag Race finale in the next couple of weeks. Um, we don't have to figure out what we're what we're doing next. We there. I'm sure there will be some new shit or some suggestions from the people. Yeah, please. Um. All right, Pastor. Well, let us rise just like Jesus rose again. Put your hand on my hip when I dip. You dip. We dip, and repeat after me, saints. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. But it is not the day for you to try it. Praise the Lord, saints. Hey, Ron Isley. Stop it. Bye. I probably look a little bit too much like his niece to be playing ball head again. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you know his eyesight ain't that good, so we'll probably call you Alex, too. And then it would just get weird. Real weird. Bye. <laughs> Bye.